This video will be all about how to make your own beautiful handmade wardrobe from scratch. So we'll be covering not so much physical sewing tips, but more of some overall tips and tricks and philosophies to encourage you on your dream and journey of making your own handmade clothes from scratch. This is especially for total beginners. Even if you haven't sewn a single item before, this video is for you. This is the approach that I have used myself over the past several years to sew my own wardrobe from scratch. I had basically not sewn a single clothing item until perhaps about six, well, no, I guess several years ago I sewed my first clothing item, but I didn't get seriously into making my own wardrobe until about five or six years ago, and I've since created an entire wardrobe of handmade clothes, and this is the approach that I used. So I'm sure that some of the tips and tricks in this video will work for you too. So let's jump into it. So first in this video, we're going to cover some of the whys of why we might want to sew some of our own clothes from scratch. And then we'll cover the hows of how to sew your own clothes from scratch. And stay tuned until the end of the video when I will be sharing just some rapid fire tips that will help you on your journey of making your own handmade wardrobe and making it as simple and doable as possible. Why make your own clothes? Creating a beautiful and personalized aesthetic for the way we choose to present ourselves to the world, i.e. the clothing that we wear, is one of the most powerful and yet simple and easy ways to transform the way we feel about life as well as the way that others view us. It's basically the ultimate act of power and individualism to choose the way that we present ourselves to the world, and it's one that's becoming more and more rare in today's age of mass-produced fast fashion that's kind of like a one-size-fits-all sort of style and fit. When we know how to sew our own clothes and make our own clothes, it is such a rare thing, and it just gives us such personal power to choose the way that we present ourselves to the world. When life is going crazy, when the world is going crazy, we can still, you know, lock ourselves into our sewing room or even just sit in our living room with our sewing machine, take a few hours, sew up a handmade garment that fits our bodies perfectly. And there you go. You have just transformed a tiny corner of your reality to be more positive and more, um, more custom fit for you and your life and your personality when everything else was feeling like it was out of control. This is exactly what I love about sewing clothing for myself. Here's a quick personal example. After having my most recent baby, my fifth baby, three months ago, needless to say, my body was feeling quite different. I gained a lot of weight in this pregnancy, which was not a bad thing. I actually didn't, I, I wanted to gain more weight in this pregnancy just for my own overall health. But it did mean that once the baby was out, my body was feeling quite a lot different than it did pre-pregnancy. And unfortunately, most of my clothes are quite tailored fit which meant that all of my pre-pregnancy clothes weren't fitting me, not even close. And I was also just craving more of a loose and comfortable fit of clothing just to feel more confident and comfortable in my life. So instead of just moping around for it and feeling awful about my body and trying to change my body to fit into clothes, I instead changed my clothes and I sewed myself not a ton, just three new dresses, but those three dresses have made a big difference in how I feel on a day-to-day -day basis. This is one of them, in fact. It's just, you know, fitting my body at the new normal that it's at right now, more comfortable, but yet still flattering in a different way than my pre-pregnancy clothes were because my body was so much different back then. Another um, why as to why you might want to make your own clothes is that uh, shopping can be actually awful. Like I know lots of people love shopping, but I'm assuming that if you've clicked this video, you're probably one of those people who maybe doesn't care too much for shopping and trying to find clothes that fit you in these stores in the mall or even online. Um, I'm sure you can relate to the fact that it's just stressful. Like going into a mall, you see these like impossibly thin mannequins wearing these outfits that look good on them. And you think, Hey, maybe that'll look good on me. And then you go and you try to pick out a size that fits you. And then it ends up being this like much bigger size than you might've thought you needed. And then when you try it on, it just looks awful in your body. Whereas it looked amazing on this thin mannequin. And then you leave the store just feeling awful about yourself and your body and feeling like you need to change your body rather than thinking about maybe changing clothes or changing the way that stores are or making your own clothes. This is why I like making my own clothes. I can just avoid all of that. I just avoid so much stress. You know, I actually recently went into not even a standard store in the mall. I just went into a thrift store and I tried on a few things, didn't buy any of them because 
it was just that exact experience. I tried them on. I looked in the mirror. They looked awful on me. They didn't fit, whereas I might, I thought that they would fit. They did not fit. And I left the store feeling awful about my body and like I needed to like go on a diet and do a bunch of exercise. But it wasn't because I actually needed that. It was simply because the act of trying on these clothes and having them not fit me made me feel so bad. <laughs> so leaving that store that day, it definitely reminded me of why I love making my own clothes so much. Also, the best part about making your own clothes, in my opinion, is that it can be custom fit to your body. So for example, it's not just about making it in a standard size that fits you. All of our bodies are individual. So when you make your own clothes, you can make something bigger in the upper body than it is in the lower body or vice versa. You can just make it fit your shoulders or make it fit your hips and you can completely tailor the fit of said garment to fit your individual body perfectly and to flatter your individual body perfectly. Also, needless to say, it's just a great way to have an individualized style that you can't find in stores nowadays. Okay, so now let's get on to my points for things that I would think will be helpful for you when you're wanting to sew your own handmade wardrobe. Begin simply. Let me tell you a story. When I first started sewing things, it wasn't actually clothes. I used to sew cloth diapers and baby carriers and things when my first son was a baby. Um, when I first started, I had very little equipment. I did not even have a proper table to put my sewing machine on. My husband and I and our son were living in a tiny one bedroom apartment and I just put my sewing machine on our coffee table from Ikea and I would operate the pedal to make the sewing machine go with my knee while I was kneeling on the floor in front of it. And honestly, I have some of the best, most positive sewing memories from that particular setup. I also didn't even have a yardstick. Do you know what I would do when I had to measure large measurements? I would take off that little, um, I don't know what they're called, but those little decorative boards that you can hang on the wall to measure how tall your child is and mark their height at different ages. I would take that off the wall and I would use that when I needed to draw long straight lines or get long measurements. <laughs> I also didn't even have an ironing board. I would just kind of spread a blanket out on the floor and then iron on top of that right on the floor with my iron. And again, some of the best sewing memories I have are from that time. I also didn't have pattern paper. I was still into drafting my own patterns back then, but I would just tape a bunch of smaller pieces of paper together to get large pieces to draft my patterns on. It was pretty crazy looking back, but I loved it and I have some of the best memories. Now that's just my personality. I get easily overwhelmed by buying a bunch of tools, especially if it's something like a new hobby that I'm just trying out and I don't know if I'm gonna stick with it. So that was my reasoning with having such minimal tools. But maybe you're a person who will feel more <laughs> um, excited about sewing if you do invest in a few good tools right off the beginning. And obviously there are certain tools that you that you are gonna need to invest in, like probably a good sewing machine, although you could just start sewing by hand, of course, a good pair of fabric scissors and some good pins, high quality thread and needles. That's really about all you're gonna need though. And on to my next point, make your own patterns. Okay, this tip might be a little bit controversial. It's definitely not for everyone, but this is the way that I made my whole wardrobe, which is draft or drape your own sewing patterns rather than just buying patterns all the time. There's really a few reasons why I felt drawn to this personally. And again, this is my personality. If you have a different personality, then this might not apply to you. But the reason why I liked making my own patterns is because once you start learning to sew, you realize very quickly that just because you buy a sewing pattern in your size doesn't mean it's going to fit you. You might have to do something like a full bust adjustment or a full hips adjustment or a full tummy adjustment. There's all sorts of adjustments also just in the length of your body that you might have to do to said pattern. And that the thought of doing all those adjustments to a pattern every time I bought one felt more overwhelming to me than the idea of simply just making my own master pattern from scratch that I knew would fit my body and then using that as a foundation to draft my own other patterns from that. So I used a book called Metric Pattern Cutting by Winifred Aldrich and it is a wonderful book. It's never gone out of style. There's all sorts of new editions of it. I just bought a used one and that taught me how to draft my own basic bodice block, which is like your basic master pattern that fits your upper body mostly. And then I can, I have a bunch of those bodice blocks now, like a skirt block, bodice block, a fitted one, a loose one. And now when I want to draft my own patterns, I just begin by tracing out one of those blocks and then altering it 
based on instructions in my pattern drafting book to get the particular style of garment that I want. So now I am at a point in my life and a season in my life where I am enjoying buying some patterns simply just to speed up the sewing process because I did just have a baby and we also are in the, a massive move right now in the process of a massive move. But I do recommend um, getting comfortable with the idea of making your own patterns. Again, if this works for you and your personality, because it gives you so much power and it also obviously helps you save money, which is huge because sewing patterns can be pretty expensive. And if you feel like you need to buy a new pattern for every single garment you want to make, it might just become cost prohibitive for you to begin sewing your own wardrobe because you also have to buy fabric. So if you can make your own patterns, it will be helpful. Now you don't necessarily have to make all your own patterns from scratch, but even if you just get some basic pattern drafting skills, what that means is that you can buy a more basic, for example, dress pattern, and then you can change the sleeves or you can change the skirt and you can get all sorts of variations of that garment just from buying one pattern when you have some pattern drafting skills. And it's really not hard. Now there is another way of making patterns and it's known as draping. I don't know a ton about draping. I do have one video on my channel about draping, but that's another way of making patterns that's a little more sort of flowy and organic and not so much math based. So if you think that would suit you better then definitely look into learning draping. Okay, the next point I wanna talk about is buying fabric. And in fact, what I'm going to recommend is getting comfortable with the idea of buying fabric online. Now, again, this isn't going to suit everyone's situation. Maybe you live near an amazing fabric store and that's great. I don't. I just live near your standard big box fabric store. And in fact, we're soon going to be moving to a very rural area with probably no fabric stores. So I'm fine with that, though, because I've actually been buying all of my fabric online pretty much since I started sewing. I had a few bad experiences in the beginning where I would go in my local fabric store and I would say, ooh, like this fabric looks cool. It has a cool pattern on it. And I'd bring it home and make a garment out of it only to realize that the pattern was actually quite jarring. Or, you know, the first dress I made was actually made out of quilting cotton, which isn't the nicest thing to make a garment out of. It's kind of stiff and just kind of cheap looking in a garment. And I've since learned that I prefer buying completely natural fibers, which are easier to find at inexpensive prices when you're shopping online than in the store usually. And I prefer buying solid colors generally, just because solid color garments are usually just more timeless, more versatile, and more elegant most of the time, in my opinion, than prints prints kind of come and go out of style and maybe you'll like it this year and then you hate it the next year or maybe it just doesn't suit your body shape and then also when you're working with pattern fabric it's a little harder to figure out the pattern matching when you're cutting out your pattern pieces so I just recommend finding a good online fabric store for me I love buying linen online linen is one of my favorite fabrics to work with and I can buy it in all sorts of different colors and different thicknesses online for a better price than what I would get in the store don't make clothes in a rush. My next tip is all about um, time and the amount of time we choose to put into garments. We live in an era where everything is about speed, fast, 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 get things done as fast as possible. That's why we have sweatshops and that's why we have fast fashion and people just have started to view clothes as something very disposable. You might wear it for a few months and then donate it or throw it out and buy a new one. Or maybe you wear it for a few months and you still like it, but then it gets holes in it. So this leads me to my next point. Don't make clothes in a rush. Change the way you think about clothes. When we're making our own handmade garments, it really makes us think about um, the amount of time that goes into making a garment. And for me, this makes me want to spend a little bit of extra time and possibly money to get a higher quality garment that will last me longer. So this can look like making higher quality seam finishes. So instead of just, you know, zigzagging my seams on the inside, I'll do French seams or flat felt seams, which are stronger and they also look much better on the inside and they make for a longer lasting garment. It can also look like lining your garment, lining the bodice of your dress or lining a coat or lining any garment that makes it last longer and just be more substantial. And it can really last you for a decade when you make clothes that are high quality like this. 
It does take more time, but it's worth spending that extra time. One of the early garments I made was a red 1950s inspired dress that I made out of linen, and I am so proud of that dress still because I took all the extra time and research needed to make that dress super high quality and have a couture finish, it had lots of nifty details on the inside, and I still have that dress today, and it has lasted me this long. That I made that dress about five years ago, four or five years ago, for me, that's a long time for a garment to last because I'm notoriously hard wearing on my garments. And this dress is still serving me well. Now, it doesn't fit me as well right now because I just had a baby, but I love that dress still because I put the extra time into making it very high quality. Focus on one item at a time. Okay, so when we get a dream about making a handmade wardrobe, maybe we feel inspired by finding someone online who's made their own handmade wardrobe, and then we want to jump in and do the same thing. Um, I can totally relate to the fact that when you get excited about something, you just kind of want to dive all in and just do everything all at once. Like you just want to jump in and have a handmade wardrobe in a couple months, just done. But I want to encourage you to just slow down, view it as the tortoise and the hare. Having a handmade wardrobe is really a lifelong practice. It's not just something like you get done in a couple months. It's something that you ideally want to keep flowing with your whole life. And so the way to do that is to simply not burn yourself out in the beginning. And also when you're trying to make a bunch of things all at once, when you're still a relatively new sewer, the danger is that you might waste time and money making a bunch of, for example, maybe you make a bunch of skirts all at once and maybe a few months into it, you realize, hey, I could have actually done that better. Or maybe I don't actually like this particular style of skirt very much. And then you feel bad that you just wasted all that fabric. You could, of course, use the same fabric and make it over into something else, but that's kind of a pain. So I would just encourage you to, when you're a beginner sewer and you want to make a handmade wardrobe, just take a slower approach and just focus on making one item at a time. And that way you will, you will learn so much from making that one item so that by the time you move on to your next handmade item, you will be that much better and you'll have that much better of an idea of what you like and what works for you and what techniques you like working with. Don't overwhelm yourself by trying to make a bunch of garments at once. I am only now at the point in my life where I feel comfortable maybe cutting out a few different garments at once or sewing a few different things kind of back and forth at the same time. And that's because I've been doing it for so long and I feel more comfortable with the fabrics I like, the techniques I like, the patterns I like. But even now, like for example, in this season I'm in right now with a newborn and we're moving, if I'm gonna sew anything at all, I just need to focus on one thing at a time. So of course this especially applies for you if you are a beginner sewer. Make mock-ups. So my next tip for you is the importance of making mock-ups when you're making your own handmade wardrobe. This sort of fits into my previous point which is when you're sewing clothes and you're putting time and money and effort into this, it would be a shame to spend all of this time making a garment only to figure out that it actually doesn't fit you that well. And that happened to me in the early stages of, stages of sewing. I remember I made a dress and I put so much time and effort into finishing this dress, giving it a very high quality finish on the inside as well as the outside, only to find that I didn't actually love the style of dress and the fit of the dress. So if I just taken more time during the fitting process to make maybe another mock-up, I don't remember if I made any mock-ups for that, then it could have saved me so much heartache. I actually came very close to wanting to quit sewing during the making of that garment because I felt so discouraged at all the time and effort that I put into this dress and then it didn't even fit me very well. And I realized partway through that I didn't uh, like the type of fabric that I was using for that particular pattern. So it's really important to make mock-ups. First of all, what is a mock-up if you're a total beginner? A mock-up is simply where you take the pattern that you want to make a garment with and you sew it first out of an inexpensive fabric, preferably a similar type of fabric to what you're going to be using with the finished garment. And that way you can see, first of all, how it fits you and you can make little adjustments. And second of all, you can just see how the overall garment looks and if it works well with that type of fabric. And this is a great way to learn, first of all. Like you can learn fitting so well just by making a few mock-ups. You can also get an idea of what types of garments you like, what types of fabrics work well with certain types of garments. And you can buy fabric um, like on Amazon for this pretty inexpensively, like cotton muslin fabric, or you can just go to your local thrift store or see if anyone has old fabric to give away. 
and you can make mock-ups out of that. Balance functionality with beauty. Okay, my next tip is basically a little trick to keep you motivated in making clothes for your wardrobe. And it's to find a balance between clothes that you know will work for your wardrobe while actually aiming to make those clothes a little bit more than your normal clothes. So for example, maybe you like to wear a lot of t-shirts and you'd like to make a t-shirt because you know it's something you're going to wear. That's great. I do encourage you to make clothes that you know you're going to wear, not just, you know, make a fancy suit or something if you never wear suits or a fancy dress if you never wear fancy dresses that would be kind of a waste of time so let's say you want to make a t-shirt well instead of just making a completely basic t-shirt that's just like all the other ones you already have or just like the t-shirts that you could buy at walmart or whatever try to make a t-shirt with a little bit of an extra nice flair maybe you could make it with some with some gathered sleeves some nice frilly sleeves or a, a different type of neckline something that makes it a little more interesting a little more feminine or a little more elegant or just a little more unique and that way it will motivate you to keep making more items for yourself because it means that you can make things that are unique that are different from the stuff that you can just buy for five bucks at walmart it motivates you that that was a big part of what motivated me. I did start making clothes that I knew would work in my wardrobe, but I always strove to make them unique, a little more feminine, or in my case, a little more vintage and historically inspired than what I could just buy at the stores. And that motivated me to keep going because I knew that if I wanted to get the type of clothes that I was envisioning in my mind, the only way was to sew them. I couldn't just go out and buy them. Don't take things too seriously. Okay, my next tip is basically just have a f have fun. Don't take yourself too seriously. Garments will flop. Sometimes you will spend a bunch of time making something and it will just be a total flop and waste of time. But remember, it's not actually a waste of time. Everything you make, whether or not it works out, is a massive learning experience. And in fact, I have found that I learn the most from projects that are serious mess ups or that have some serious, you know, bumps in the road that happen. That's what I learned the most from. And this is the best way to learn. So just kind of view it as a way of educating yourself on sewing without having to go to school. Maybe you spend some money making a garment and it doesn't work out for you, but hey, it was still cheaper than going to college to learn sewing, right? Or to learn fashion design. So just don't take yourself too seriously. Don't get too upset about things that don't work out. Just have fun. This is just a fun journey of exploration and learning a new skill. Making your own clothes from scratch. Tips and tricks. Okay, so now I'm just going to go kind of rapid fire through some quick tricks and tips to help you to sew good quality handmade clothes for yourself from scratch. So let's jump into it. My first tip is, again, buy fabric in solid colors rather than prints. Solid colors are easier to create multi-purpose items for your wardrobe that will work with many different other garments or that will just work for you for a longer time than using prints. It's also just easier to work with solid colors as a beginner than to work with prints because you don't have to work because you don't have to worry about pattern matching and worry about learning to select what types of prints look good in certain types of garments. My next tip is work with natural fibers. So when I say natural fibers, I'm referring to the type of usually plant fiber that was used to weave the fabric out of. So examples are cotton, linen, um, animal fiber that makes great fabric is wool. I always recommend working with natural fibers rather than synthetic ones because first of all, they're higher quality, they are more breathable, and they're usually much easier to work with than synthetic fibers. My next tip, use a good sewing machine. If you have a cheap sewing machine that is always jamming up on you or always just making uneven loopy stitches, it's gonna drive you loopy. <laughs> you are not gonna wanna sew if you're always having to mess with your machine and it's always making these bad looking seams and stuff. I always recommend using a good machine. Now this doesn't mean that you have to spend a lot of money. Buy a good used machine. Maybe you know someone who sews who has too many sewing machines and they're willing to sell you one or even give you one. Or my biggest tip is I love working with vintage sewing machines. And if you'd like to learn more about vintage sewing machines, I have a video all about that, which I will link right here. And I always recommend buying a vintage sewing machine rather than buying a new but cheap model of machine. Cheap models of machines nowadays are total garbage. They have plastic parts on the inside. They break really easily. They're just very low quality. So if you, let's say you only have 
hundred dollars to spend or maybe two hundred dollars to spend use that to buy a good vintage machine rather than buying a cheap modern machine you will thank me <laughs> vintage machines are so much better now they do require some maintenance so definitely check out my vintage sewing machine video for more info on that but they are just so worth it and you can get great vintage machines for not too much money don't use cheap fabric Okay, so when you're a beginner sewer, you might be very tempted to just want to buy a bunch of cheap fabric to begin sewing with, or maybe to, maybe someone gives you a bunch of their old fabric, but some of it's kind of like, eh, cheap synthetic fibers or just cheap fabric. Um, save that fabric for mock-ups, but don't use it for your finished garments. Because the thing about learning to sew is you might be tempted to not waste money on high quality fabrics, but the thing is, it's going to be a lot harder to learn how to sew good garments on cheap fabric than better fabric. There's a reason why certain types of fabrics cost more. It's because they're woven better. The weave is much more straight and just the way it's supposed to be. And it's just easier to handle, easier to line up the fabric and sew it when it's a good quality fabric than when it's some cheap slippery fabric or the weave is kind of crooked. Just trust me on this. It is worth investing in good fabric. It will just catapult your sewing journey. You'll learn so much more, so much more quickly when you're using good quality fabric than when you're using cheap fabric that just makes you want to quit because it's so hard to work with. By the way, the garments you make will also last longer if you're using good fabric, which can encourage you to keep going because you realize, hey, I made this garment and it's still lasting me five years later. That's a great motivation to make more clothes when you know that what you make will last you a good amount of time. My next tip is learn high quality seams like French seams or flat felled seams. There's other types of high quality seams, but I would encourage you to start learning those types of seams rather than always relying on, for example, zigzagged seams, which is what most beginners will do because they don't have a serger yet. If you do have a serger and you're comfortable using it, now that's a great seam finish too, and it's very convenient. But I still don't have a serger and I've been sewing for many years and it's because so far I haven't really felt the need for it because I like the high quality historical or vintage style seams which are finished on the inside very nicely and neatly but they do require a little more effort like French seams and flat fell seams. I love these types of seams because they look great on the inside and they last a lot longer. They make a much more durable, long lasting garment. And I just like being as minimal as possible and not having more machines than I need. That's not to say that I won't get a serger at some point because I think it would be nice in some ways, especially when I want to make something a little more quickly now that I have a newborn and we're moving and there's a lot going on in my life. But I, I would encourage you as a beginner to keep it simple and learn these high quality seam techniques that only require a straight stitch. My next tip is create items that you will wear, not items that you wish you would wear. This is a huge roadblock that beginners can fall into. And I've experienced this myself, not so much in sewing because I've been sewing for a long time now, but with shoemaking, for example, my tendency is to want to make something just very cool looking, but it's not necessarily something I'm going to wear. Like I don't wear high heels ever in my day to day life, but I have made high heel shoes. And unfortunately I haven't really worn them that much because I'm just not much of a heels girl. So the same thing applies for clothes, make clothes that you know you will wear, but and not clothes that you just wish you would wear. For example, if you don't wear a lot of fancy dresses, unless you're feeling super inspired and motivated to make a fancy dress, I would veer more towards the types of clothes that you are wearing. Even if it's, you know, just sweatpants, jeans, t-shirt, like whatever, make something that you normally wear. But again, to link it back to what I said previously, try to make it a little more unique or a little more just interesting than your actual day-to-day -day wardrobe because that will motivate you to keep going as long as it's a type of garment that you know will work for you in your day-to-day -day life. Okay my last tip is about the types of fabrics we use to work with. I would encourage you as a beginner to get comfortable with using maybe one or two types of fabric and just stick with those until you've made several garments. My biggest recommendation is linen. I absolutely love linen personally and linen you can buy it in all sorts of different colors as well as different thicknesses. You can use linen to make jackets as well as very very light you know blouses and things like that if you just buy it in different thicknesses. It's also very easy to work with. But for you, it might not be linen that you like. Maybe it's just a basic cotton. But I would encourage you to just find a certain type or weave of fabric that you like working with and stick with that for a while until you get more comfortable sewing garments and understanding what fabrics work well for different garments. Okay, everyone. So that is all of 
the things I wanted to say, tips and tricks for sewing your own handmade clothes from scratch. I really hope this helped you. And if you're feeling inspired to jump in and make some of your own clothes, definitely leave a comment below and give this video a like because it signals to YouTube that this is valuable content that's worth promoting. I would also like to plug my new secondary lifestyle channel, which is called Catherine in Real Life, where I will be sewing updates from my real life with my family of seven. And especially as we're making this big move to the country, you can learn more about that on my other channel. So I definitely encourage you to subscribe to that if you're interested in my real life. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already for natural hair care and handmade fashion content. And I'll see you on the next video.